name's uh, Chris Hadfield. I was a colonel in the Canadian Air Force. Uh, I first came to the uh, Air Force Museum here in the 1970s when I was an air cadet. Uh, pretty amazed with some of the airplanes that exist, but today I'm here because of this machine behind me, uh, MiG-25 Foxbat. Um, I'm a pilot, I was a fighter pilot in the U.S. Uh, Air Force and U.S. Navy as a test pilot and then I was an astronaut for 21 years and flew to three different spaceships, but now I also write books. And my fifth book is going to have this airplane behind me as, uh, as one of the main characters, and there's not very many MiG-25s in North America, so this was a great chance to, to, uh, to come to the facility here at Wright-Patterson and have a chance to look, look at this machine. I've flown a lot of airplanes, uh, maybe a hundred different types of airplanes, and I've flown a bunch of fighters. Uh, this would be the biggest fighter I would have ever flown. It's just monstrously huge, and it's really not a fighter at all. Uh, it had very low G capability, it couldn't turn hard. Um, it, it was really just designed to take off, get going really fast, go high, and intercept uh, the big high-speed bombers of the late 50s and 60s. So very much an interceptor, not a bomber. but best of its day and still an amazingly capable human invention and to get up close to it to see the, the real elegance of some pieces and then the crudeness of some others and just the practical Russian design of how they put it together it's really instructive. Um, so yeah you know, I've, I've written a fiction book called The Apollo Murders it's set in the spring of 1973 at the end of the Apollo program and during the Cold War and of course most of the astronauts at the time were fighter test pilots uh, and so the next book in the series carries on from there in the fall of 73, early 74. But it's, it's going to have a little bit of space component, but more um, flying and test and intrigue component. And uh, one of the major events in the book involves uh, MiG-25 and then the interplay between the Soviet Union and the United States at the time. And then some of the amazing projects that were going on in the United States uh, and Israel at the time. So all of that's tying together in the book, but a really important piece that I was missing was just familiarity with this airframe. So it's uh, so great to be able to get up close and with MiG-25 dust today. Pilots love airplanes and so to come to a place where all of the different inventions over the years are now all put into one location with their detailed history and, and properly back up to where you can really understand how they work. It just, it's a unique resource in the world to be able to come. And uh, it's nice to see though, this one just sort of like it was dragged out here from where it was originally salvaged before it's had a chance to be put back into pristine museum condition. It's actually quite informative. You can just get a, a little snapshot in time of this particular frame. Um, so I count myself hugely lucky to see it. I'm going to try and do right by, uh, by the museum but also by this airplane in the book that I've